Um, also, you know, your sound is so recognizable, it's almost instantly recognizable. It seems to be a, a big reason of your success as well. Um, and also, your, uh, people talk about your abilities in the Altissimo, mm -hmm. it's sort of legendary. What do you do to, um, to keep those chops up? What do you practice? What have you worked on to develop that? Well, there's so many things to practice. Um, you know, it, it, in any given day, I can't practice everything I should practice. So I just, I, 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 I play things. I play um, flute and clarinet etudes, and then I practice them up an octave. I practice long tones a lot. I practice scales uh, all through the different registers and that sort of thing. And I, uh, um, I write music. Of, I write my own etudes and practice them. And I, um, I play along to recordings because I help, it helps focus pitch on you know, by having something to relate to. And up in the altissimo, the, the it's, it's, you have to be very careful about how you place the pitch. Uh, and it's easy for it to be a lot of different notes. Any given note to be, you know, very much sharper or very much flatter. It depends on how you decide to, you know, how you uh, adjust your armature and your wind to be able to keep it where it's supposed to be. So. And you're an everyday practicer, yeah? Yes, I practice every day. That's good. Um, and, uh, did you ever think when you, you know, when you were growing up um, in the late 60s or any of that time that eventually you'd be a professor at a university teaching music? I don't, I never, I don't think I ever thought about that. I really don't think I ever thought about that. It was, um, um, you know, no, never crossed my mind. <laughs> and now, was, now that you're doing it, what is, what is it like to, to teach students? And oh, is I, it just I, I really fulfilling? like it. I like, I like young people a lot. You know, I've got a daughter who's 21 and a son who's 26. And, I spend a lot of time around, you know, them, and I have a sense of like that, that world of, of, of um, you know, right now because that's my that's you know, they're a big part of my world, so I have a sense of that age group a little bit, and I, I really I find it very intriguing to be around uh, people who are seeing the, the from that vantage point. Because I remember what it was like for me to be there to be. Um, seeing the world from a state of relative inexperience and, and, and what I learned from there. And I, I feel like I can sometimes channel some of that knowledge, you know, backwards. You know, some of what I, I found out later on, I can sort of loop it back around to some, somebody who's younger and doesn't have the advantage of that. And I think it's, um, you know, it's, it's really interesting. I really like doing it. I, I, get, I get a certain satisfaction from seeing people, um, from watching people learn. I think most learning is done on your own. I think most students, the real, the real actual learning is the, the way you absorb the information is something you do by yourself. That, you know, the teacher can pre present it, can make it available, but you have to do the work. So I get the chance to see how different people approach that process of learning, teaching themselves. Hmm. And you've also done some producing, mm -hmm. um, partly due to your knowledge of uh, electronic music and, mm -hmm. and using those Maybe programs. Like Kenny Werner record. Sure. Um, yeah, that was, I liked that. That was fun. I was glad he asked me to do that. It was an interesting job. And I mean, I've been in the studio forever. I started when I was very young. My first recording session in a professional studio was maybe 17 years old. So I've been doing this a long time. And with Tower of Power, they let us, we had hands on. We were, we were the producers of those records. And so all of us learned a lot about production doing that. And I've had my own studio for years and years and years, so I, uh, I know the ins and outs of doing that. And at SNL, one of my jobs is to produce the recordings for the show, so it, it was really quite comfortable. It was a very normal sort of thing to do. It, it was the first record I've, outside of the Tower Power Records and um, outside of recordings I've done of my own, that I produced for somebody else. Uh, and it, it was, um, I, I really liked the experience. I, I think I liked maybe a little bit more producing and playing at the same time, because I, I really like the playing part of it. But um, still, it was interesting, and it was, I felt very natural, it felt like something I'd been doing a long time. It wasn't anything strange or odd about it, it was just, you know, and, and I, like you said, I've worked, been working with electronic music for a long time, so but he wanted those elements in there, and it was something that I have a, a lot of familiarity with. I've been doing electronic music since my early 20s, uh, and really thought of, was always very interested in that aspect of music and pursued that. So. Um, last question is, uh, what, do you, what do you see for yourself in the future? Are you sort of somebody who just continues to sort of take things as they come or do you have some set plans musically for your future? I'm thinking about um, maybe this summer when I have some time uh, um, starting a website 
Um, I haven't done it so far. I saw Sonny Rollins' website and I really liked it. It's sort of, you know, sort of inspirational. I think it would be interesting to put together something yeah. and maybe find a way to disseminate some of my music that way rather than through the commercial record business. I think that's the wave of the future as far as getting your music out there. And uh, I think the recordings are becoming more like calling cards for other opportunities. And so I hope to, you know, to play more gigs and, you know, travel around and do stuff. My kids are grown up, you know, I can uh, feel a little more free about doing that sort of thing. And, you know, the show continues on. I'm, I'm, I'm still very engaged with doing the TV show. But each season is a new season and you never know what's going to, you know, be there when it happens. Uh, but like, like you said, I, you know, try to take things as they come. It's a combination. You make a plan, you try to implement it, and when it doesn't work out, you do something else that's sort of similar. And it just continues like that. It's always different from what you thought it was going to be. No matter what you no matter what your plans are, it's going to be different. Great. Thank you, Lenny. Sure.